can't even see my screen now. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Clifford Snow. I'm a volunteer contributor and with OpenStreetMap. And I would like to thank the team that um, selected my talk because I understand there's only a handful of us that were actually community mappers that are talking today. And I'm one of the few, so no, you can't, pardon? Can't hear, I'm, I'm gonna grab this other mic. I understand there's only a handful of community mappers that were chosen, so I feel really honored to be able to talk today. And I wanna to talk to you about um, rural America. Um, I used to live in Seattle, and Seattle is a big metropolitan area. Uh, traffic, most of the time, is just solid, and uh, you can barely get around. It takes, takes you half an hour to go a few blocks in Seattle at rush hour. That's how bad it is. I now live in a little town north of Seattle. It's uh, about 60 miles. I can be anywhere in 10 minutes at any time of the day, except when a train goes through. We don't have any bridges. Um, it's that difference. And it really made me start thinking when I started mapping rural, my little rural area, because I live in a very rural area, uh, there's a so big difference. And I was really interested in it. So I went out, and um, a friend of mine's daughter got married, and um, we all went to the wedding, and one of the, um, one of the couples were there. I talked, to, I talked to one of them, and he says, well, you, you should talk to my dad. He can tell you all about rural America because he's, he's been around living in a small town for a long time. So I ended up talking to uh, Jim Rizzuto in Oregon, excuse me, in Colorado. He's a recently retired uh, president of the uh, community college in town. He was a former director of the Colorado Department of Health and Care Policy and Finance Administration, and he did 16 years as a state senator in Colorado. Um, ask me more questions about him, and I don't know much more. <laughs> um, never actually met the person, but it was really interesting. So I, I asked him some questions about what it's like to live in rural America. So while I go through some of that, I'm going to show you some pictures. This is rural America on the screen right there. But he says, um, it's a less stressful life if you live in rural America, and I can really attest to that. It is much less stressful. Uh, but you have fewer choices of goods and services. We only have a few restaurants. Some of these towns have none. If you want to go to the grocery store, you usually have to drive a long ways to a grocery store. Um, and if you want to go buy an appliance, you got to go find a big city to drive to. It's that kind of difference. Um, most of the activities, you know, we go to bars, we go to movies, we go to nightclubs. They go to sporting events. That's kind of what they do there. Um, a big difference in there. Um, the communities are very close-knit, and they're very resistant to change, which I think is really interesting. Oh, by the way, that picture right there, that is in my backyard. We had four coyote pups in our backyard this spring, and they were so cute. I don't have any pets, so I don't have to worry about pets. Um, so he, we, t we talked a lot about that, and we're going to talk about some of the things that he explained to me about rural America as we go through this. Um, there's a, the post office in Hamilton, which is a little town not too far from me. Um, this is Cedra Woolley that you're seeing right there, Oop. and the coyote again, so we've been through them. So where is rural America? Um, according to um, the Agriculture Department, there's 3,200 counties in the U.S. and Puerto Rico, 1,400 so are metro, all the rest are non-metro. And of those 900, uh, those metro, non-metro areas, 951 aren't even close to a metro area. This is what map looks like. All the red is metro, all the other colors are rural areas. So as you can see, there's a lot of rural areas in there. Um, so I started looking at how well we mapped in rural America. And I found a whole lot of roads to nowhere. We, have, we put in a bunch of roads that are called residential roads that you would not want to be driving on in a standard car. You'd want a four-wheel drive vehicle, and not just like a Subaru. You'd want one that was a stick up this high. You know, you've seen them on the street. We have them in Mount Vernon all over the place. Um, or you want to be a logging truck to be driving some of those things. Um, it, it, it's really kind of bad. Um, we have roads that haven't been touched since they were imported, except maybe to fix the name. Um, we have a handful of POIs that a handful of maybe tourists have put in. 
uh, because nobody knows about OpenStreetMap, and there's very few building outlines. But I want to focus on one thing. I want to focus on, talk about roads. So here's some pictures of Tiger data that I took uh, using um, JASM. These are, are roads that just plain don't exist. And this is current Tiger data. This is not 20 years ago. This is, this is what's in the latest Tiger data of, I think it was 2017. And as you can see, they look pretty bad. And a lot of these actually had roads on top of them. I cleaned up a handful of them, but all I did is went around to as many states as I could force myself to go through and try to find some examples of like that. What a mess. And they weren't hard to find. So this is, this is what we have in rural America. On the other hand, if you go to the big metropolitan areas, those roads have been touched maybe 100 times in some cases. Um, King County, where I used to live, in, in, which is Seattle, King County, OSM data for roads in King County is far better than the county's roads. Far better. Because we've actually gone in and fixed a lot of little things that they don't even know about. So um, metropolitan areas where we all seem to focus, because that's where we're mostly from, we're doing a really great job. But when we get to rural America, we've just kind of forgotten about it, which is why my title is Forgotten America. So tackling the problem. I figured out there, there's kind of like two ways we want to get this. Uh, we want to do it um, logistically. We, we got to get tools and, and people and, and techniques to get in there to go fix this. And then uh, we'll talk about profoundly later on. We need to make some big changes to the community um, if we're going to do this. So first of all, um, adding background layers from State Department of Transportation. I discovered, and probably a lot of you know this, a lot of our State Department of Transportation uh, through ESRI have a WMS server that you can actually put as a base map to uh, JOSM. And you can actually do it in um, ID as well. It just doesn't work quite as well at this point. Um, we can start by working county by county. We can focus with those with open data. We can, um, we can use a tasking manager or a map roulette to go work on those things. And we can, we can encourage our corporate friends like Microsoft and Facebook to help us on this because they also want to improve OpenStreetMap in the US. And I think this is an area that we could use more editors in there. So I've actually reached out to them. And if there's any others in here that would like to jump in, please do. Um, the other thing, background imagery. Um, right now we can do um, road center lines and, and JASM pretty easily. And thanks to um, Princey Vershaw, I can't pronounce her name, I apologize. She was a um, Summer of Code student this year. And she actually created the um, vector tile background layer for JASM. And it is the slickest thing. It takes you just a few minutes to do. You take a shape file. You convert it into a, um, uh, through a tippy canoe, convert it into a, a vector tile, and you put it up on a map box, and, and that you're done. You're done. You just got to make, make it public, and you can load that into ID, and now you can have that data available in ID. Um, right now, we can't, with the vector tile, it's just the raw data. So what you see is, is, a, is a vector with, um, uh, in a color. That's all you get. But if you click on it, which you can do in ID, you actually get the uh, data behind that vector tile. So you can, if there's road surface, you can pick up the road surface. You can pick up this, uh, any speed limits that might be there. So there's a lot of good data that you can pick up on there. Uh, I think later on I'm going to mention in here, we could actually then, uh, with a little bit of help with some people that are good developers, we could develop a, um, a style that uh, ID could apply to it so it actually might show up in different colors if it was a gravel road or versus a paved road. Um, we're also, I've asked the community for help. We've collected data on most of the states. And so we have a, uh, right now it's sitting in a, a Google spreadsheet. On uh, every state in the, in the union where we have open data, and it's a, if there's any, um, transportation information that we can use in OpenStreetMap. So we have all this, um, and I'm going to try to get this onto the wiki here in the next few weeks so that people can update it and add more information to it and use it. 
So you could actually go into that WMS server and put it into your map to, to look at it. Um, so we need some volunteers to work on cartography for, for the street layer for IDs. So um, if anybody was interested in that, um, we're going to have a, uh, a bridge of the feather, feather tomorrow. I'm losing my voice. Um, please come to help out. Um, I, I, looking for help, um, maybe creating um, some kinds of incentives to help people do this, either prize or recognition. Maybe uh, one of the things we could do for the next state of the map is we could give some free scholarships to people if they fix some of these roads and get in, actively involved in there. Um, so here's, here's an example. Um, a couple years ago, Teton County, Idaho came to us and says, your roads are really terrible. Um, here's, a, here's a shape file with all new ones. C can you fix it? So a handful of us got together, six of us. We put them into a tasking manager project. In, in about two months, we literally converted every road in Teton County to the current um, data that the, the county had lined them to the imagery, um, added road surfaces for the county. And it took two months, which isn't bad. In Teton County is that small little county. It's not in Wyoming, by the way. It's not that, it's right next to Teton, Teton County, Wyoming, the one we all heard about. So it's not hard to do. Okay, so big issue here is, is how do we go then with this huge number of counties that need help how do we get there? Now, the technological, technological part of it, I'm not saying that well, is pretty straightforward. It just takes some time to put the tools together so we can actually um, get the data out there. The hard part is that we need more mappers. So I'm looking for people to help. Um, if you're a writer, we need some articles written about OpenStreetMap in all kinds of different type of publications. Not just technical publications, because we are pretty well covered. I see quite a few articles about OpenStreetMap, but we're collecting from the same, we're going to the same community, technical people. We need to get out the people that are in other areas, um, education, um, retirees like myself, um, that want to just uh, get involved in something. So think about it, writing articles, try to get them published in local blogs, local, um, Anything you can think of, I guess, um, to help, help us attract new people. Um, and then think about um, welcoming new users. Uh, one of the things we've discovered is that, uh, somebody talked earlier about, uh, he felt really good because somebody made a comment about his first change set. If you get on our Slack channel, we have every new user in the US and Canada appears on there. If they're in your neighborhood, if they're in your state, if they're in your county, Reach out to them and, and say, hey, thank you for contributing. What can I do to help you? Um, invite them to the Slack channel. Um, it, won't, it won't reach them all. Some will just ignore you. But there will be a, that percentage of people that it's going to be just enough to get them to come over and do more work in OpenStreetMap and maybe make a long-term mapper out of them. Um, if you can do anything to help initiate and support local mapping parties in your community, that would be good. If, you, if you're a company that uses OpenStreetMap, sponsor a uh, meetup to help map areas. Even if it's humanitarian mapping, that would be good too. Um, and, t and get out there and talk to groups in your uh, local community. Talk to the Kiwanis. See, I got a list of them here. This, this is just a list of all the places you can talk to that I could come up with. 4-H uh, and Fu Future Farmers, scouting organizations, County commissioners. Uh, I, I meet with regularly with the county, um, my county GIS and some of the city GIS people, uh, city managers and the mayor, uh, local and regional economic groups, uh, development agent. Oh, yeah, uh, university GIS clubs. A number of universities have local GIS clubs. Uh, reach out to them. Um, school su superintendents. That was the interesting one that came from Jim. Um, I think because he's the president of a community college. That was close to him, but uh, as we talked with some of the other people tonight or today, they all thought that was a great idea because they're looking to see how they can get their people involved in uh, helping support community efforts. Um, Department of, of Local Affairs, State Department of Education, Economic Development, Highway Departments, um, they're actually interested in talking to us. Um, 
And then non-political organizations like Lions Club, Rotary, Kiwanis, Junior League, I, I've heard of it, I have no idea what it is. Uh, <laughs> but um, there's a lot of things you can reach out to to get people interested in OpenStreetMap, okay? So, I'm looking for volunteers. Uh, tomorrow, one o'clock, it's up in the, in the Birds of the Feather. I'm trying to get a group of people that are interested in helping. If you're interested, have any, any little bit of information or would like more, come, come by, let's talk. Um, I'm looking for help with the, the corporations that are using OpenStreetMap. Um, I'm looking for your help specifically with, um, if you've got mappers, help map in, the, um, in these areas. If you can sponsor some meetups, um, if you can just get articles written within your company, that would be great. Um, and then, like I said, birds of the feather tomorrow. Any questions? Paul. You talked about ways of getting more mappers. What about rural specific ways that may not occur to us in the city addressing this specific problem rather than just more mappers overall? Yeah, that's, I was trying to get at some of those on there. Like um, a lot of scouting organizations are in the rural areas. Um, 4-H and, and Future Farmers are definitely very rural. Um, I've tried to talk to some of them. I haven't made too much inroads, but I'm still working on that. Um, but but that's, that's, that's a really good um, question. I, I, I haven't got good answers for you. Um, it, I think it just matters getting out and talking to people. Other questions? Yeah, it would, it, would, it would be nice if we actually had some more pamphlets like we used to have to hand out. So, yeah, I agree. I think, I think finding more ways to hand out information, I, I definitely agree. I, I personally contact every new user in the state of Washington and have found, uh, actually somebody else did the study, and found that we get a, like a slightly higher percentage of retained people that continue to map. And so I, I, it works. Um, just reaching out to people. And I do find some that are really um, active in the rural areas. I, I was actually telling Stephen about one um, earlier today. Uh, I think he's a high schooler, um, lives in a very rural little town um, east of me. And he started out, he, his first edits were kind of iffy. He's stuck at this thing and he's now going back and fixing his, his original edits. And he's done a lot to add improvement to the little town of Concrete, Washington. And it's, it's really encouraging to see. It, one person can make a huge difference. It doesn't take a lot of people. One person. Yes, sir. Farmers markets? Ah, that's a. That's really good. You go go to to, uh, to your local. Um, yeah. Um, uh, what did you? I'm sorry. Farmers marks. Yeah, I'm I'm struggling. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, and one of the things Jim told me about um, speaking to farms is rural communities um, don't usually have really great roads, and if there's any bad weather, they usually have to find a different way around. So by us having good maps, uh, it really helps them find different ways to get around, you know, a bridge may be out or something like that. And it, it may not really be obvious to a lot of people. Yeah, I, good question. You, you're saying what lessons can we learn from mapping and, and like missing maps and stuff. Um, I, th I think it's really pretty good. I actually talked to Dale Coons earlier today and it's like, well, would Missy Maps be interested in mapping rural America? And uh, they are. Um, so we may just need to help create some tasks to do that. But um, yeah, I, I, the key though to me is, is not just going out there and mapping the community, somehow finding people that you can connect with so that, that Teton County that we can maybe get back to them and say, here, we just updated um, Teton County. Um, is your road missing? Is it correct? And get that in the local publications. They're still using papers out there, by the way. Um, I haven't had a newspaper delivered in my house, and I'm old, and I haven't had one for years. Uh, but they still get papers, and they still live off them. So yeah, great, great suggestion. Yeah, uh, so um, he, he doesn't live that far, so I, I invited him to coffee. And as, as somebody said, an old guy inviting a young kid to coffee, that's not a good idea. Um, I, I, don't know, I don't know anything about this person. Um, I'm his, he's a laser or something, another. I, so his username is no clues to who he is. Um, but he started with the high school, so that's why I think he's a high school student. And he did a lot of work in there. Um, yeah, so <laughs> um, I think high school is a really important piece of where we could do a lot of good. Um, I've been afraid to. Uh, I'm a guy with no kids, so I don't relate well to kids. Um, <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> I'm not afraid to admit it. So if, if, if anybody in here, I know we got some high school teachers today uh, to the conference, so I really support that. And they actually, um, I think Nick's going to be up here next talking. I think he would like some high school students to help him out. Um, to a question over here. I did grain harvest a couple of years ago, and I drove 6,800 miles doing grain harvest, all on rural roads in the breadbasket of America, going from Texas to North Dakota, and um, covering 14 states. And uh, if you get a hold of the custom harvesters that, that, dive, that drive the truck, Oh, that's a great idea. I never even, I didn't know there was people like that. I've actually driven many of those miles you're talking about. I'm from the Midwest and spent a lot of time in that Texas to Minnesota. I try to stay away from North Dakota. <laughs> I didn't know that state, states were doing that. You were saying states are collecting videos of roads? Whether we what? Yes, I actually talked to uh, Washington State Department of Transportation quite a bit. Um, they are um, they're very open. Um, I just went to a conference where they talked about their open data, and they're tightening it up so that they don't put 
personal information in there, which we've been talking about at this conference, uh, which is really good. I don't want personal information. But um, I've never seen any vi uh, videos. Yeah, so, uh, we would love to compare okay. Yeah. Okay, that's great. How am I doing on time? I think I'm up, right? Um, we have about four more. Well, yeah. If anybody has any more questions, what? What? Oh, over the uh, corner. Yes. Yes. Um, so um, Mapbox has been really generous. Um, uh, I went to Mapbox and I said, hey, I have um, all the trail, all the U.S. Forest Service trails I'd like to put up for everybody to map from. I, like, I love trails. Um, and, but I said, I'm going to exceed my, my bandwidth if I do that. And they said, no problem. And I now have an account where I can put up as many um, of these as I want. Um, um, if we have more people doing it, we'll just need to figure out a process of, of getting this information up there. I'm really excited about the WMS server because it doesn't require us to go to a map box and say, can we, can we have more bandwidth? Um, we're actually using the state's bandwidth. And um, so if, if and it's, a, it's really quite trivial to put up. Um, i surprised how easy it was. I got help from ENDs. Um, to do it, and uh, once I put it up, I actually have on my JAWS, I actually have the entire U.S. Um, hydrology layer, which all the rivers, all the lakes, um, I think even glaciers are on there. It's pretty amazing, and it just is, is another layer that you can actually get names and stuff like that from. So, but yeah, we, we, we definitely need to talk to Mapbox and others to get help with that, but that's a very doable thing. Where, where did you grow? Where did you grow up? Where did you grow up? Okay. So, so here's what like I would like to suggest for county by county because I think county by county is the right way to do it. I, I think we need to have state data up there so that when somebody's mapping in an area they can actually maybe fix something because it's just sitting there. But they're maybe doing another purpose, adding a business or something. But I think doing state by state, if we, if we take Tasking Manager or Map Roulette and do a, a county by county, um, like we did with um, Teton, uh, it would work really well. It would be up there for a very sh you know, short period of time. And so we wouldn't be hogging Mapbox's facilities. They're, they're going to sit there forever. We'd only do it for the pro period of time that it was up on the tasking manager or map roulette. Nope. No, actually, I, I, I've done a few counties now, and, and you can do quite a bit, just one person. And I've been given no. <laughs> I've talked too much. Hey, thank you, everybody. This was great. I appreciate your questions. <laughs>